Alright guys, this is Sebi's Random Tech back with a very exciting video, or really a series of videos, where I'll be taking a close look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T60 and T61. This video has been about three months in the making, and that's mostly because that's how long I've been waiting for all of the parts I need to arrive. I was originally going to make this into one video, but I've decided to split it up into two or three videos just so I can get as much information in as possible. So basically what we will be doing is building what I would consider to be the ultimate retro ThinkPad, a FrankenPad T601. This uses the motherboard of a ThinkPad T61 in the chassis of a ThinkPad T60. Now, some of this stuff I'll talk about in the next video, but to make it very brief why you would want to do this, I have to talk about the history of ThinkPad displays. In the early 2000s, IBM introduced higher quality, high resolution displays on some of their mobile workstation ThinkPads. These were branded as FlexView displays, as they use AFFS or IPS technology to achieve better colors and contrast and better viewing angles. These displays first appeared on the ThinkPad A30 series, before eventually working their way to the T series. They came in resolutions of 1400 by 1050 or 1600 by 1200. There was even one model of ThinkPad, the R50P, which could be configured with a 2048 by 1536 resolution display. That's an impressive resolution even nowadays, and in 2004 that was unbelievable, at least in my opinion. When Lenovo took over the ThinkPad line, they released the ThinkPad T60 in 2006. And as had been the case before, the 15-inch 4x3 model was configurable with FlexView displays. However, Lenovo introduced a new model in the ThinkPad T series, the T60 widescreen version. This had a 1680x1050 display, and while it is a decent looking display, it's only a TN panel. And in 2007, when Lenovo released the ThinkPad T61, they stopped making FlexView displays entirely. The ThinkPad T60 and T61 share a lot of similarities and use many of the same parts, and because of this, it's possible to swap a T61 motherboard into the chassis of a T60 and take advantage of the nice, high-quality FlexView displays. I'll be talking more about the T61 in the next video, where I do the board swap and make some upgrades and modifications to the system, but in this video I'm going to be focusing more on the display. So I could just get a T60 that has a FlexView display, put it all together, and call it a day. But there is one thing that concerns me about these older systems. Pretty much every laptop in 2006 used CCFL backlights for their displays. These are fluorescent tubes, and since then, LED backlights have become more standard. While fluorescent tubes did the job back in the day, they do have a lot of disadvantages compared to LED counterparts. They use more power, they don't generally last as long, and they tend to dim and yellow as they age before eventually failing altogether. It is possible to actually modify a CCFL backlit display to have it use LED backlights instead. You can buy a generic kit off of eBay, or you can go to a website and find a backlight kit that is specially designed for ThinkPads. I could do this, and I'm thinking about doing a video about this sometime in the future, but at the moment, I didn't really want to worry about breaking, possibly, a already hard-to-find display. So, there is another solution that we can do. Bohitis, a company that manufactures displays, made a 15-inch 1600x1200 AFFS display that uses LED backlighting. It doesn't work in the ThinkPad Lickety Split. There's a few things we have to do before it will work but it will work in the ThinkPad T60. This panel is the HV150UX2-100. Don't confuse it with the UX1-100, as this panel uses CCFL backlights. The UX2-100 uses LEDs. These are very hard to find. I mean, they were never really mass-produced for any laptops, and a lot of the ones that are out there have been picked up by ThinkPad enthusiasts, but you can still buy them if you are willing to pay. Most of the time these sell for around $200, but I actually managed to score one for very, very cheap, only $50, because it has a dead pixel. For some people this might be a huge annoyance, but for me, with a display that is this high of resolution, one dead pixel is barely going to be noticeable. So, after waiting a few weeks, the display arrived, but there's something else we need. This display looks like it has the same connector as a standard ThinkPad T60 display. 
but it's actually flipped upside down, and it's wired differently from a standard ThinkPad display connector. In addition, there's a second connector that isn't present on a ThinkPad display. So I enlisted the help of the ThinkPads.com forum. There's a website that is run by forum members called The Boardroom, and they specialize in a lot of ThinkPad modifications and upgrades. One of the things that can be done through this website is having your display cable and inverter for a ThinkPad T60 modified to work with the Bohitis display. Forum user Real Black Stuff does these modifications. He's located in Europe, so if you're living in Europe, it's going to be cheaper for you. Those of us who live in the United States will probably have to pay an arm and a leg for shipping. At the moment, though, he's in the middle of moving, so he wasn't able to perform the modification for me. Thankfully, another forum member had a spare modified cable and inverter on hand, and he was able to send them to me for a small price. After getting the modified cable and inverter in the mail, I was ready to put this nice high-quality display into my ThinkPad T60. I decided to do this first before doing the motherboard swap, as in my opinion, switching out the display on the ThinkPad T60 is one of the most difficult parts about working on the machine. So let's get started. As always, make sure to power down the system, unplug the system from the wall outlet, and remove the battery. Having the battery or the power connector plugged in while doing a display swap can damage the motherboard, so just don't do it. Then. There are nine screws we have to remove from the display. However, they're covered by these stickers, or screw caps, I guess you can call them. I did my best to take them off without damaging them, but if you really wanted to, you could probably order a replacement set of caps if you don't really want to worry about babying these stickers. But I managed to peel them all off, and then I removed the screws. All of these screws are the same size, so you can put them all together no problem. After all the screws are out, you can take off the front bezel, you kind of have to uh, move the display latch in order to get the bezel off. And then we can carefully remove the old display. But before we get too far, there's also these two brackets on each side of the display that are held in by two screws each. So let's remove those screws and take the brackets off. Normally, if you were doing a display swap, you would remove the display connector from the screen and unplug the display's backlight from the inverter. But since we're replacing the cable and inverter anyway, I'm just going to leave it all connected and take it out as one piece. Now let's get our new display. Here's the modified cable and inverter. Uh, you can see there's some extra wires soldered onto the inverter and the power transformer that was originally meant to provide a high voltage for the CCFL backlight, it's been removed. This is necessary because otherwise it would just be sitting there doing nothing and producing excess heat. These extra wires that have been soldered to the inverter plug into this additional connector on the back of the display. The modified display connector plugs in as normal. Then we can carefully put our brackets back in place and position the display within the display assembly. At some point during this process, I must have damaged the part of the cable that goes to the think light, because after powering the system on, while the display worked perfectly, the think light did not work at all. Honestly, this is a small price to pay. I'm a pretty good touch typist, and I don't really feel like paying 60 plus dollars for a new cable. So this is something I'm just going to have to deal with for the time being. Before you get too comfortable putting everything back together, make sure to plug the display in and then power the system on to test it and make sure the screen's working properly. In my case, it was, so we can proceed with the reassembly. Once the display is repositioned, we can put all of our screws back in, pop our front bezel on, and reapply all of the screw caps. At this point, I nearly panicked, because after I put the system back together, when the system powered on, nothing would happen. The power lights would come on, but the hard drive wouldn't spin, the display wouldn't come on, and the caps lock and num lock indicators weren't responsive. Thankfully, it turns out the problem was caused by a dirty RAM slot, and once I had sprayed some compressed air into the RAM slot, everything powered up as normal. So, yeah, this display is absolutely beautiful. I have two other ThinkPads with FlexView displays. They're both T42Ps, and they're both 1600 by 1200 models. Even the T42P FlexView display I have that's barely been used pales in comparison to this Bohitis display. This is not the brightest LED backlit display I've seen, but it gets reasonably bright, and it's definitely usable in lighter conditions. The colors look great, while they may not be the most accurate, they certainly look good to the eyes. The display dims as it should, 
and oh, this just looks fantastic. If I really wanted to go overboard, we could transplant one of those 2048 by 1536 displays into the system. However, there's even more modifications that have to be done for this to work, including flashing the EDID so the system thinks it's a genuine display. This display is pretty much plug and play once you have a modified cable and inverter, as it doesn't require any EDID flashing in order for it to work properly. So that's why I say this display is pretty much as good as it gets when it comes to the T60 or T61. I am really looking forward to using this display and this laptop. The T60 is one of my favorite ThinkPad models of all time, and this display really solidifies that. But before we can enjoy this display too much, we have to put in the T61 motherboard and do a few more upgrades. But that's what the next video is going to be for, so until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be sure to stay tuned for next time. Thanks for watching and have a great day.